But if you're in a, a chronic state of oxidative stress or you're somewhat unhealthy and mitochondrial function is impaired, then methylene blue might be a first line of defense by stimulating substrate level phosphorylation, increasing overall energy levels, So as you might have suspected, methylene blue exhibits a biphasic dose response, meaning that low dosages might be beneficial under various conditions, but at higher dosages, it might have deleterious effects, especially if you don't suffer from the particular medical condition in which these uh, elevated dosage ranges are generally prescribed for. So based on a review of the scientific literature, it seems that the negative effects of methylene blue start to manifest at dosages beyond 0.5 milligram per one kilogram of body weight daily, regardless of administration around. So again, that means 50 milligrams methylene blue if you're a 100 kilogram bodybuilder or 25 milligrams methylene blue if you're a 50 kilogram short king. Keep in mind that chronic high dosages of methylene blue can accumulate in tissues, stating them blue literally, leading to unknown long-term, potentially deleterious effects. It seems that methylene blue has potential performance enhancing benefits through its effects on mitochondrial function, improving and optimizing adenosine triphosphate synthesis, which should result in increased energy capacity during your workouts. Methylene blue enhances mitochondrial function, biogenesis and ATP synthesis through various mechanisms. These effects seem to be dose dependent and observed in in vitro and in vivo studies. So that means that at a low and effective dose, methylene blue already enhances mitochondrial function that does it up until a certain point, at which point there's a tipping point in the dose and methylene blue is no longer an antioxidant, but starts to potentiate pro-oxidant effects. And these are methylene blue's effects on mitochondrial function, where it enhances electron chain efficiency, Methylene blue acts as an alternative electron carrier in the electron transport chain. It accepts electrons from reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotides at mitochondrial complex one and donates them directly to cytochrome C, bypassing mitochondrial complexes one and three. This rerouting of electron enhances the activity of mitochondrial complex four, which reduces electron leakage and mitigates the production of reactive oxygen species, which can otherwise damage the mitochondria due to oxidative stress. By facilitating efficient electron transport within the electron transport chain, methylene blue increases mitochondrial respiration and adenosine triphosphate synthesis, increasing overall energy levels. Methylene blue contributes to mitochondrial biogenesis, Methylene blue induces the expression of peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1 alpha, which is a key regulator in mitochondrial biogenesis. This leads to an increase in the number of healthy mitochondria within cells, enhancing cellular energy production and resilience. Methylene blue stimulates substrate level phosphorylation. In conditions where oxidative phosphorylation is impaired due to the inhibition of mitochondrial complex 1 or mitochondrial ATP synthase, Methylene blue stimulates substrate level phosphorylation through the succinyl coenzyme A ligase enzymes. This alternative ATP production pathway helps maintain cellular energy levels even when mitochondrial function is compromised. Now, I don't think this is something you have to worry about if you're otherwise healthy and your mitochondrial function is normal or slightly upregulated through the use of various uh, mitochondrial function enhancing compounds like MOTC, SLUPP 332 etc 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 but if you're in a, a chronic state of oxidative stress or you're somewhat unhealthy and mitochondrial function is impaired then methylene blue might be a first line of defense by stimulating substrate level phosphorylation increasing overall energy levels when again um, oxidative phosphorylation within the mitochondria is impaired methylene blue contributes to reduction in oxidative stress Methylene blue reduces the production of reactive oxygen species by preventing electron leakage in the electron transport chain, like I mentioned earlier. Methylene blue can also be reduced to leucomethylene blue, leuco-MB, which acts as an antioxidant, scavenging free radicals and preserving mitochondrial integrity. Methylene blue enhances cellular oxygen utilization unless you've been taking such a high dose of methylene blue that you get tremendous vasoconstriction and increase in blood pressure. And even then, methylene blue improves oxygen consumption by cells, ensuring efficient ATP synthesis, even under hypoxic or energetically stressed conditions, including strenuous strength, performance, or endurance exercise. 
As a compound that increases mitochondrial function and biogenesis, you could consider combining methylene blue at low and effective dosages, where the commonly reported side effects don't occur, with other compounds which are known to improve mitochondrial function and biogenesis, increase ATP synthesis, but reduce oxidative stress for an overall synergistic effect. Just be forewarned, you might be able to shoot lightning or laser beams out of your fingertips when you start stacking various mitochondrial support aids together. Methylene blue is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. So have a look into these various mitochondrial function enhancing compounds, including astaxanthin, 4 mg to 16 mg daily, carnitine, whether that's oral L-carnitine, L-tartrate, or oral acetyl L-carnitine, at dosages of 2,000 mg to 3,000 mg daily, or go with injectable carnitine, 500 mg subcutaneously or intramuscularly, once or twice daily, creatine monohydrate, 3,000 to 5,000 mg daily, glutathione, whether that's coming from n acetylcysteine and let's say 1,200 mg to 2,000 mg daily, or coming from s adenosyl methionine, 400 mg to 800 mg daily, reduced glutathione, 500 mg to 1,000 mg daily, s acetyl glutathione, 200 mg to 300 mg daily, or injectable glutathione, 1,800 mg intravenously once weekly, or 600 mg intramuscularly three times weekly for total weekly intake of 1,800 mg injectable glutathione. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide uh, being produced from nicotinamide mononucleotide at, let's say, 300 mg to 1,000 mg daily, or being produced from nicotinamide riboside at the same dose, 300 mg to 1,000 mg daily, or administered directly in the form of injectable nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide at 100 mg to 200 mg intravenously once weekly, or 15 mg to 30 mg sub-Q or intramuscularly daily. A vitamin B complex helps with mitochondrial function at a B50 or B100 complex daily. Vitamin C helps with mitochondrial function between 2,000 mg to 5,000 mg daily. Ubiquinol does the same at, let's say, 200 mg to 600 mg daily. Proloquinoline quinone, PQQ, at 20 mg to 40 mg daily. Taurine helps with mitochondrial function 3,000 mg to 5,000 mg daily. Quercetin helps with mitochondrial function at 500 mg to 2,000 mg daily. Curcumin helps with mitochondrial function at 500 mg to 1,000 mg daily. Berberine, 500 mg to 1,000 mg daily. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids coming from fish oil at 3,000 mg EPA and 2,000 mg DHA daily might help with mitochondrial function. MOD-C for sure helps with mitochondrial function at 0.5 mg to 1 mg subcutaneous or intramuscularly daily, or 5 mg to 10 mg subcutaneous or intramuscularly one to two times weekly. Um, have a look at the, the mitochondrial support stack, which have an extensive deep dive on how to use MOD-C with other mitochondrial biogenesis and function agents. Um, but I didn't include methylene blue or SLUPP332 because at that time I was not aware, unfortunately. Uh, so maybe it's time for an updated mitochondrial function video. Let me know down below if you would like to see it. SS31 at 5 mg to 10 mg subcutaneously or intramuscularly daily. I ran a protocol with SS31 for about two weeks in duration at 5 mg daily, and it did not do anything for me. But you might be different. Again, I used it in a stack of various mitochondrial support agents. SLUPP332 at a total of 200 micrograms to 1000 micrograms daily. I have a deep dive on that. You should give it a watch. 5 amino 1 MQ prevents the breakdown of NAD plus in the adipose tissue, which might help with mitochondrial function as well, but it mostly helps with fat loss. Add 50 milligrams to 150 milligrams daily. I have three videos on that. Give it a watch. And then uh, maybe through PPAR uh, activation and expression, telmosartan and cardarine might have a beneficial effect alongside methylene blue with regards to fat loss. Thomas R10 at 20 milligrams to 80 milligrams daily, depending on how uh, high or low your blood pressure is, and cardarine at, let's say, 10 to 40 milligrams daily, split out over two servings of 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams, pre-cardio and pre-workout. I have a deep dive on cardarine. You should watch it.